But we begin this half hour with new details in the Phoebe Prince case. She is the young girl who took her own life after prosecutors say she was bullied at school. Well, now the people accused of doing the bullying are striking plea deals and also speaking out. NBC's Jeff Rawson is in Hadley, Massachusetts with the latest. Jeff, good morning to you. Hi, Meredith. Good morning to you. This case really set the tone for the entire country, didn't it? If you're a bully, you can be charged with real crimes by police and prosecutors. The kids, six of them here in South Hadley, Massachusetts, were all charged with serious, serious felonies, carrying serious jail time as well. Most of them are striking plea deals this week with prosecutors to avoid jail time altogether. But, you know, we've never heard from the bullies themselves. They've never spoken out about what happened. They've never apologized. Until now. In court Wednesday, one of the so-called mean girls broke down. Kayla Nary now admits she bullied 15-year-old Phoebe Prince at school and online. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the unkind things I said to others about you. I'm sorry about the unkind posting on my Facebook page. But mostly, I am sorry for January 14th of 2010 in the library and in the hallway when I laughed with someone I was with shouting humiliating things at you. I am truly sorry to Phoebe for my role in this tragedy and to the Prince family, who I know has been suffering since that awful day. But Phoebe Prince would never live to hear that apology. For this young girl, the torment was too much. According to court papers, the bullies called Phoebe a whore, threatening to punch Miss Prince in the face. One day, walking home from school, the bully screamed, why don't you just kill yourself? And she did. Phoebe hanged herself at home. Her mother has been silent ever since, but opened up for the first time Wednesday, facing Phoebe's alleged bullies in court. As I said my final goodbye to Phoebe at the crematorium, I lifted her from her coffin and held her for the very last time. My little girl, once so full of life, was now so cold. I went to ask her, what am I going to do? Phoebe trusted Sean Lovehill to take care of her, guide her through the maze of South Hadley High School. I can only imagine the pain she felt in his unrelenting desire to harass and humiliate her. Six of Phoebe's classmates, the accused bullies, were charged with felonies, including Kayla Neri and Sean Mulvihill. Wednesday, both reached deals with prosecutors. Guilty. Thank you, sir. Misdemeanor criminal harassment. The sentence, one year probation and 100 hours of community service, helping at-risk kids. Sources close to the case tell NBC News three others will strike the same deal later today. Is Phoebe's family satisfied with this, the kids getting no jail time? Yeah, I don't think anybody wanted to see those kids uh, go to jail. I don't think anybody thought they deserved jail. Phoebe's mom signed off on the deals to avoid an excruciating trial, but you can hear the hurt in every word. Phoebe ended her pain brought about by harassment, harassment that could easily have been stopped if any of those involved had ever reached inside themselves to find their own compassion. Hard-wrenching to be sitting there in the courtroom. There really wasn't a dry eye in the entire house. It's been about a year and a half since Phoebe's death, and the criminal case this week will almost come to an end. As we mentioned, five of the six kids involved here are striking plea deals with prosecutors, but there is a single holdout. This boy is charged with statutory rape. He denies that charge. He apparently isn't dealing and wheeling and dealing with prosecutors at this moment and plans on fighting those charges, Meredith. He'll be in court over the summer. All right, Jeff Rawson, thank you very much. Emily Bazelon is a writer and senior editor for Slate Magazine. Good morning to you, Emily. Good morning. As Jeff just pointed out, all six of these teens originally charged with felonies that would have led to jail time. Now two of them have pleaded guilty to criminal harassment and misdemeanor. Three more are expected to do the same today and receive probably that same lenient sentence. Are you surprised by the outcome here? It's hard to square the outcome with the very serious felony charges that were filed, but I'm not surprised to the degree that Phoebe's family supported this deal, and also that I think a sense of proportional punishment took over in the DA's office. Why are you not surprised that her family, specifically her mom, 
said she was all right with this because she's obviously heartbroken and very angry. Absolutely. Um, Phoebe's father, however, for months has been saying that what he really wanted was for the teenagers involved to acknowledge their wrongdoing and to apologize. And I think we just saw Kale and Neri do that in a quite moving and brave way yesterday. Do you believe, uh, based on your reporting, that justice has been done here? And I ask you that because the last time you were on, uh, you had written a piece that suggested um, quite uh, clearly that you felt maybe these kids should not be charged with any crimes. I do think there's a question about using the criminal justice system in situations like this. But I also think that listening to the facts recounted yesterday that a misdemeanor harassment and seeing them acknowledge what they had done seemed like it was bringing some relief to Phoebe's family and perhaps um, to them as well, in the sense that these cases are over, these very serious charges have been hanging over the heads of these kids for a year, and that is a punishment all in itself. And the kind of harassment that they subjected Phoebe to, they have been receiving death threats and harassing um, messages sent over the internet. Your react, the reaction in the courtroom that you saw from people there when these lenient sentences were handed down. You know, it was just a very sobering moment and occasion, and I think that there was a way in which Phoebe's mother was able to speak, um, and I hope that gave her some comfort, and she really expressed herself clearly, as did Kayla Neri, so there was the sense of a kind of public accounting. So you didn't get the sense, because there was such outrage directed at these six kids, that there, there's that continues to be the case, having seen those sentences come down? I think that's right. I think there will be pockets of upset about this online and offline, but I think that a lot of people, particularly in South Hadley, feel relief that this case is coming to an end. And there is one uh, another student that's involved in this, Austin Renaud. He was charged with statutory rape, as was Sean Mulvahill yesterday. That charge was dropped against him. Do you anticipate that the charge will also be dropped against Austin Renaud? Well, I do think that would be a fair outcome, given the resolution of Sean's statutory rape charge. Austin's case is different in the sense that there isn't necessarily a lesser offense for him to plead to. Statutory rape means registering as a sex offender in Massachusetts. That's a big deal. We're talking about an 18-year-old who allegedly had sex with a 15-year-old and who denies it. Um, you know, those are the facts at yeah, issue. Yeah, and, and finally, do you think there is a message here that, that kids will, will receive loud and clear about bullying, spe specifically during this uh, period where social media is so prevalent, that it can be criminalized? It can be, and it's risky. Kids write all kinds of really mean things on Facebook, and most of the time, people don't really pay attention, but sometimes it can really come back to bite you because there's a permanent record of the cruelty that you are part of. Yeah, sad all the way around, for sure. Really sad. Emily Basselin, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.